Hello, other archer. Oh yeah, I don't. I think I must have been logged in to check something else earlier on, and I didn't log out. Yeah, I keep fine. doing that by accident too for my other Zoom meetings. They're like, "Who's checking, Archer?" <laughs> was it? I think I, I was having to look for this this webinar for Dan Saucer and Alex. Is it Alex? Alec. Um, I was trying to work out if there would if we had like webinar functionality beyond like team meetings. Are you talking? Wait, are you talking about Charlie's training or? Is it Charlie? Could be Charlie. My brain's yeah, full of. Yeah, yeah, it's Charlie. Actually, <laughs> Charlie. here's a a decent question. Charlie I think Hoyt, maybe yeah. to bring up off the the bat, right, is that uh, Charlie Hoyt is going to have this great continuous integration training, um, and uh, other good software techniques, but it's going to conflict with the daily call, at least it, it, as scheduled currently on Wednesday. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm going to recommend we either don't have daily call on Wednesday or we postpone it. Uh, I think just not having it for the day is not the worst thing in the world. I unless, think it's not a huge deal, I'm hoping, yeah. No, unless something really, really pressing needs to be recorded, it's, it can wait for a day more than likely. Okay, I suppose we could also put out a poll, but that seems like a logical conclusion to me, and it's my day to do it, but I'm going to, I plan to go to the training, so... Um, yeah, I'm going, and I'm not having a coder, but I'm just going just out of curiosity. Just out Very of cool. Ooh. All right, well, I'm looking forward to it. I still have all these accounts to make beforehand, but I got my um, Ubuntu installed finally, so uh, should be should be in better shape. Nice. <laughs> um, it, would somebody be willing to help annotate the um, the daily call table. I don't think I did it last time and that's bad because it shows up on the website now. Um, so oh, I'll do it. Thank you, yeah. Tyler. I'm just gonna get a fresh pit and put it onto my other web oops, don't we have a window. Okay. Um great. All right. Let's see here. All right. Well um Dan, would you like to give an update first? on VT? Sure. Um, so some things to update. Yeah, the Charlie Hoyt talk is on Wednesday. Very excited for that. Um, for the contradictory claims team, we got the first round of like piloting how getting annotations for that task would look. We discussed with the annotators um, and just clarified the task a little bit with that small batch. And now they're working on a larger batch of annotations. Uh, so that's nice. Um, with the engineering team, with, with you and Jude, I mean, good stuff is going on. Uh, refactoring our old code, starting to get some test cases in there, and just continue to work on documentation with, with Josh. So that's, that's good as well. Um, those are the main updates for right now. Very great. Very cool. Uh, uh, Jun, I see you're here too. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, just that I have like very rudimentary tests set up for all of the uh, the functions now, and I'm just waiting to meet up with that to like discuss functionality and overall architecture. And I guess I'll I'll post the meeting time in the uh, in the engineers channel so that anyone who wants to listen in can. Nice. That's great. Okay. Yeah, that sounds useful. Um, and you and I have to arrange a meeting as well to talk about um, consolidation. Right. Um, let me know when you think that would be a good time. I'm still, I'm still surveying stuff, so I'm not in any great hurry. Um, okay, that could probably happen after um, the meeting with Ben. So, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah. I think Josh is also making uh, making some progress with the documentation, auto doc stuff, and Charlie was helping him with read the docs, which I guess we're all going to learn about if we join the training on Wednesday. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm team read the docs. Same. <laughs> All right. I, I'm learning so many new things too, so I'm very excited. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I am not seeing anyone here from risk, but if I've missed you, please holler. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing anybody here. I don't think I see anybody here from ties, but if you're here, please holler. Uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> I missed this part on the table where Team Discovery Engine says Archer and Archer's brain. <laughs> but we are, we are missing Archer as well. 
uh, at the moment, but Lucas is here. Is, yeah, Lucas is. I think. Um, was. He was here. So he was here. Uh, I say he asked for the link, um, but he's not here now. Okay, but well, Isaac is here. Um, yeah. So Isaac, do you have any updates for us for forecasting? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, on our side, I actually forget if this was in the last one or not, but yeah, we, we had meetings about kind of our data architecture, so some work is getting underway on that. Um, uh, I'm also, we're kind of writing out, or I'm writing out a planning document for kind of what our focus is going to be for the next few months, so that should hopefully provide some more insight. Um, we got confidence intervals added to our main repo, so soon we should be able to display the model's confidence in its predictions and the range of values it thinks it might be in, which is good for an interpretability standpoint. Um, yeah, oh yeah, and also just writing up kind of a review of some of our methodology and probably gonna post that on towards data science just for publicity and other stuff. So I guess that's the overview. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's see. Um, okay, um, I see folks here from comms. Are there any updates from comms? Um, I don't know. I think Bianca should probably got speak here if she's comfortable. Otherwise, I'll uh, do. Mostly because Bianca's working on some clever stuff right now. So I think she's got more to say than I do. Well, that's just, I had not for me to claim, but yeah, no, sorry, I can't have my video and I'm in my kitchen. It's very untidy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we had a really good call, um, which we didn't record. Apologies for that, but there's a really good summary of that that Shirley posted um, or shared for anybody who's interested in the idea uh, was to discuss the whole um, flow of people first arriving to Corona Y and signing up and getting engaged back in. Yeah, we've got a, a Miro. To... We've got a Miro document for planning like the for planning like the volunteer journey through the first being introduced to us, right through to the joining process and the the interactions that are going to exist. We're trying to build like a flow, a flow chart. Yeah, so the idea is there to connect the dots and, and get all the things that have already been done and see what, is, what, what needs to be done and how we can make that process smoother for everyone involved. Um, and so at the moment, Anton is looking into getting um, volunteer details into the CRM and um, Rohan is looking at changing the sign up form on the website so we can connect that with what we have in, in the CRM. And I have some stuff to do in the CRM to make sure it's all safe and private in terms of the data. And I've, um, I've been going through the current database and adding, I've basically merged all of the Slack users with all of our email users and merged them all into their individuals. So. We'll have the Slack user links and the Slack information attached to the whoever's signing up in there. So sometimes it's like two different emails, or it's like well, the, their username and their what name they go by. And from that, I've also started pulling um, organizations connected to people, so um, institutions, or you know, like what universities that email address is from. And I'm and after one, I'm working through that, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to do organizations so like nasa jpl or any other and basically any i'm gonna we're just getting with one big list of like organizations connected to them people that's the plan i'm doing that manually right now if we can get that our linkedin as well would be helpful but um yeah and i was i've also been like manually adding linkedin profiles that i've been finding and we've got about 1500 1500 lines right now in it so right. wow quite, yeah so we're finally consolidating the basically the the volunteer metrics between Slack the, and the... The entire the, user base is going into one space. That's great. Yeah. Long and time there's some weird yeah. ones in there and there's quite a few duplicates as well, but you know, it's the nature of anything like this. And it, it'll give us an idea of who signed up and rather than just like people, some people have signed into just obviously just Slack 
and never sign up through the form. So it gives us that information and makes us have an idea what's going on there. And um, yeah, it's just, we're just trying to better understand it right now. But yeah, and Bianca's working really well on, and I've um, introduced Dog Alley to the CRM. I made her account so she can have a look around because it's probably going to be um, our data management system as well. So it's going to be like policy documents, organizational documents, templates, Potentially, if we can build it right, it might have um, social media management in there too. So hopefully it's going to do a lot of the sort of heavy lifting in one space. And um, Anton is on about, well, he's already thrown together on the infrastructure a wiki. So we can start looking at what we need to, so the wiki might be able to be used for, um, for coding practices and for you know, anything that people create information that needs to be stored in a more long-term knowledge management style. Um, and then we'll have a single space of, we'll have a, we have the idea of that single place of truth and, a, and we'll have a secure place for the secure stuff and the wiki will be the space for the public knowledge, for lack of a better word. That's the plan. So are you planning, I don't, I'm not familiar with CRM at this point. Is it also going to be used to manage email communication or is, there, is it going to be used with the existing forms of email communication? No, it'll, it'll do emails. Okay. It manages emails. So does that mean you're, you're going to make like a new group um, and then we're going to have to migrate off of the old group? Well, once we bring all the users in there, we'll be able to, I don't know if we're going to be able to use it for like the Google daily email. I don't know if it does that, but it probably will do. Okay. Um, but the idea is, is we're going to, well, with Bianca's understanding, we're going to build like um, permission levels. So some people are going to be able to access more of it and some people are going to be able to access less of it. And the idea is we um, work out what use, what people need to access to do certain jobs and they, that's the ones they'll access. Obviously for privacy reasons of the data management, you know, data legislation, we've got to try and work out a data policy that works as well. So there's, there's lots of organizational stuff that needs to be sort of finalized, but we're starting to move in that direction all right those were some great updates i mean we'll only i was i would say we'll only replace current things if they're not working or if there's something that can be done easier or better or whatever in the crm and i think for now there's a lot of stuff that we can do in that area before we need to replace anything that is currently working yeah i don't i don't think we're replacing things but theoretically in the future maybe but right now well, yeah. yeah, it's it's working, but it's working kind of it's working very inefficiently. So that's that's part of why I'm asking. Um, so okay. the idea is, is the CRM will be. Yeah, the C the idea is the CRM will be rather than what you're doing, where you're like manually adding the email addresses into the the user groups and stuff. Like it yeah, do that. The the CRM will take the information from the form, and it will be just the user database done. That step is one in one step. And right. then you can you can use that system for emailing. How we can do mass emails, I'm assuming it can because it's got marketing systems. It's got it's got a marketing and social media systems inside it. So marketing is by this definition what we'd be doing. We won't be doing it as marketing, but it would be a form of like mass emailing system. So it's there. It's just we need to. We're all we're like we're all learning it. <laughs> it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a new system. Okay. I know that we sort of discussed briefly because uh, the, the idea of having this system um, automatically add the new, new joins into the existing Google group. And there are various ways to look at this, it seems like, because, you know, first of all, the, the existing Google group only has people who actually signed up. Um, and uh, either on the very old team roster that we had or on the new team roster that we ended up getting, but basically people who are Slack only, those folks are not on the Google group. Whereas um, they will be in my new list because I've just pulled them all into it. Right. So actually, if you've actually pulled them all into it, we can possibly fix the Google group now um, because we, we have the power to do batch uploads and, and you and I can talk about that if that's of interest at I'm, this point. I mean, uh, yeah, well, basically right now, I've basically, I'm, I've, I've not quite finished it. I've not gone through it definitely, but because I, I was getting rid of duplicates, basically. I was merging because I did it. I just literally dropped the 1,050 people into it, and then had to work out who were the same people. <laughs> so it was a bit of a- 1,050, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and then I had to work out all the same people who were already from one form to the other, and then work out which ones are duplicates, and then work out which ones are spam. And yeah, there was oh like boy. lots of sitting around managing to, you know, them two have got the same name, same email, they match, that sort of thinking. Okay. Um, 
I would potentially be interested in attending at least one of these meetings to try to get a sense of how we might integrate the two systems because like there are all kinds of flaws with the 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 Google admin system that could definitely be improved um, and or we might be unifying to this other thing so um, like let me know if when might be a good time for me to join okay it's okay. If we're, 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 are you in the well what used to be the human right a human resources channel now it's community engagement Pretty sure you're in there, and that we're making a point of trying to coordinate in that space. So okay, I'll take a look. In there is just make sure keep an eye on that one. Okay, thanks. I, I've been I've been totally out of the loop on that for a while, so I'll take a take a look. Thanks. Um, okay, let's see. Moving right along. Uh, I don't think I saw anyone here from Geo. Is there Geo anybody here? Is now Geo is officially defunct. Geo oh, it's just right. That's right. Okay. G Geo is officially now um, data sets, data basically. Sets. So okay. it's the, the, all the jobs G Geo used to do is now being organized by yeah the data, the data infrastructure, data set stuff. So the things that they're pulling in from everywhere is now replacing it. And then we're still going to have people in that, hopefully pulling in geospatial data that's not in the obvious public data sets. But um, okay. that's now going to be under that. Banner. Geo is now a uh, Geo is now an old name that we don't need anymore. So it's okay, crazy. let's definitely take it off the daily updates list then. So silly people like me don't read it. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, um, I don't see Slava or Anton here, but is there anybody else from datasets who would like to weigh in? Nope. Okay. Um, I think I covered all the main folks then. Uh, did I miss anybody? Is there anybody here who'd like to give an update yeah, about something else? Exactly. There's Dylan or Boris or Isaac. Well, Isaac's already spoken. Dylan, Boris, you got anything to say? Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> all right, good is good. Um, let's see. Um, I think I had, I had actually, I had two questions and I don't know if anybody here knows the answers to these questions. Um, I was working on a draft this weekend to send out to a data science group at my work. Um, and there were two things that I was trying to consider while writing this draft because I had the idea to write it a long time ago. And then since I didn't do it, many things have changed. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, one thing that has changed, I think is sort of what Kaggle is doing. And I was looking at the VT Kaggle just to remind myself when the deadline is in June. And they kind of, when I reread the description, they were sort of phrasing it as though they only intended there to be two rounds of this competition. And then there was like no information about what might happen after the second round. Does anyone happen to know if we will continue involvement with Kaggle after the second round of submissions? Or if they're planning more submissions afterwards? Is this something I should even bother drawing attention to at this point? I was sort of just going to say we spun off of them because people know what Kaggle is. So I thought that would be an interesting Yeah, thing, I think but... um, when it comes to Kaggle, I think we're having, um, there's been so many problems unifying what they're thinking is behind understanding problems and our adaptions to understand the problems, especially from uh, user experts and so, you know, you know, researchers in the field who are like making us have a better idea of the real problems that need to be solved. And some of the questions that Kaggle have been putting forward are just like either irrelevant or not con contextually weak compared. I mean, like Dan's probably got a better idea about this, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think, I don't think Kaggle's going to be doing another round. I might be completely wrong, but I think partially that is, is because the problem's so big that they're struggling to fully, like everyone, they're struggling to define the problem and the problems yeah and i think it's just been a community it's been good for pulling a community together but now i think it's kind of served its purpose especially for us we're not really i mean i'm i don't know if anyone's actively recruiting or pulling from kaggle's user bases i think that obviously the data is still being used from that the, t the, d the data sets people are still using kaggle as a reference point but they're pulling mostly from github now which is obviously like a natural space where a lot of this work is happening anyway um, 
So I don't know how much you need to. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. I think it seems sensible to talk about the fact that it, it originated on Kaggle, especially if people know about Kaggle and what it is. But um, it was never about winning the money or the competition. About it was about well, we can't even qualify with that. We're just not no. contact. We just we just uh, can't even close to qualify. Like it's meant for teams of five, not teams of five hundred. <laughs> so, right. And it's just sort of interesting what you said about this issue of sort of the problem with scope with the original competition. And that was actually what attracted me to Corona Y because I was trying to do it on my own or I was, I was trying to do, I was like looking at it on my own and feeling completely overwhelmed. And then I saw Archer's initial treatise and I was like, yeah, I like how he's thinking about this. It makes sense to me. Um, so. so I think it's, I mean, it's definitely worth celebrating the fact that that's what was one of the first flares in the air to draw the attention. But I didn't, I mean, I only found it because I was looking for initiatives that were going on and Kaggle was the place that it was discussed. I had never even seen Kaggle until I found this. So it's coincidental. I mean, obviously for the data science nerds who love a good competition, they probably love Kaggle. But for me, it was just like another another board of people doing something. <laughs> I say, really well, they have the data, well. and you know, you yeah. don't have to enter competitions. You can still like become a better data scientist just interacting with what they do. So, you know, what's what's not to like about that? Well, we're we're, um, we're, we're interacting directly with um, the AI the AI Institute themselves now. So AI two will right, right. interacting, which is their, they are curating it, Kaggle are hosting it. So we're dealing with the curators directly rather than Kaggle struggling. And now we're actually not only. Kaggle's we're not Kaggle's not even hosting it for us anymore. We're hosting ourselves, so we're not not only we're we, we're getting right. directly from the curators and we're hosting our own information now. So we've kind of gone around Kaggle completely now. But they're obviously doing a good job, and especially for the smaller communities out there, they're obviously amazing. But we've kind of outgrown their use case. Right. And, I knew this was happening, fine. and I just knew we were we were sort of taking cues from their competition yeah. like prompts. But I, yeah, I it seems like, like prompt, we're beginning to but, diverge more. Um, and their prompts yeah, seem mean, to also be subsiding, so that's kind of why it's like, ah, should I be like, hey, if you like Kaggle, you should you should get, join us. <laughs> um, um, okay, and I then think, this actually yeah, this ties in well to, to my you know my set. So I'm sorry, Tyler. My, my the, the next question this ties in well to my next question, which was that um, what we the direction we've gone in since starting from Kaggle is more as far as I can tell about this principle of discovery engine. Um, and just using this as a general like way to revolutionize the the way scientists do literature review. Um, this is how I understand it, not having been in all the Discovery Engine meetings. Um, I am trying to figure out a way to explain that um, accurately to the broader data science community to whom I am, you know, with whom I am sharing this information. Um, do we have kind of an official description of our discovery engine concept that is appropriate to share with potential new recruits? Um, I think, I think Arthur's weekly summary that came out yesterday or today has probably got something that you might be able to pull from. And um, we've we've got uh, weekly summary. Weekly yeah, summary. And also, yeah, it's starting to do a weekly summary now. Are you emailing it because I didn't see, or is he just um, posting it on general? It's on, it's on YouTube. I don't know if it's been posted anywhere beyond that. Gotcha. Think, okay. You um, but um, but he's also we've got um, a lady I can't remember her name right now, but she's Kathy an editor Miller. for yeah, Kathy, Ka yeah, Kathy, who's the editor of um, a Stanford communication, like science communication, or former editor of a Stanford science communication. So she sounds like, and she's been good at taking Arta's weird brain thought that. He struggles to communicate sometimes and turning it into like more communicated, clearer, conscious, and she's starting to understand it. So I think once we get a few more people part of that discussion, we're going to be able to have a, a more concrete explanation of the plan and where we are with it rather than this very vague, complex, interrelated idea and with lots of images. So we are slowly increasing the clarity around it, but I don't know why we are fully on it yet. Yeah, so the context there is that Arthur had a talk with the Rockefeller researchers recently and Kathy hopped on board and she's a scientific communicator. And so Arthur asked her to write kind of a little short piece trying to explain the discovery engine. So she's written that and she's asking for feedback on that. So that's probably the closest thing that exists to like, yeah. this is what the discovery okay. engine is, is what she wrote. Because the discovery engine in its, yeah, discovery engine in its own principle is 
the the big piece that all the other elements are starting to work towards really yes obviously risk and vt are trying to solve specific problems but the the test the 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 trying them trying to solve them problems is building tools that will be useful in the solving of general problems which is leading towards the idea of discovery engine it's kind of a big elements of the bigger piece you know the idea behind the discovery engine is that you, you feed it certain sets of information and it comes back with have you looked at these connections and have you looked at this way of looking at it he's yeah there's i've looked at some of the summaries on it and um, it does need to get communicated better it's just it's hard for me because there's lots of things i have to understand just like arthur does where like there's you have to understand a decent amount of medical knowledge and a decent amount of data science and a decent amount of ai before you can even make sense of it all so we need to take all that complexity out of it and make it more human in its explanation Exactly. Um, because I am, I say I'm, I'm, I'm targeting a broad technical audience at this point. You never kind of know what, like everyone's sort of bag of tricks. And so you should sort of hit all the main points in case someone says, oh, I know about that. Um, but not go too deep in, in case someone is like, uh, what? <laughs> um, I mean, like where can I find regularly. this document that's being drafted? I, I just tagged you in the thread. Nice. Thank you. I thought that might be it. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so that's in the introductions channel, I guess. Um, yep. And okay, great. Um, well, we have two minutes, and I've talked a lot again. So, does anyone else have anything they'd like to bring up for Q and A? Um, I guess just on a similar level too. That's kind of what we're doing on time series forecasting too. Like, obviously, right now we're focused on forecasting the coronavirus, but we're trying to create a better general framework for time series forecasting on problems where there's not that much temporal data, which COVID isn't. So that like, you know, if someone then uses our framework, they could like, they have only a few um, time series steps on sales of items, then they could better like forecast that. So we're trying to create kind of a general framework that leverages transfer learning and that. For so is it like, it's so in the sense to like to extrapolate data from small samples? over time yeah yeah so like for an, so an extrapolation system yeah for instance when temporal data is limited like have this general pre-trained neural network then can be fine-tuned to just forecast whatever your specific time series forecasting problem is so sounds sounds like you're trying to do like a really easy thing that's probably like no problem at all <laughs> <laughs> oh dear we always buy off the small things around here always never yeah. never the easy thing that's what's exciting about it. Um, but okay. All right. Um, well, it is 1030. And if nobody has anything else, then I think uh, it's appropriate that we adjourn and looking forward to seeing you guys again, uh, especially if we're all going to the training on Wednesday. All right, everyone have a have a great rest of your day or night. Till next Thanks, time. Bye-bye. Hey, Shannon. See you later, guys. Bye.